Good Sunday afternoon. We welcome you to Baton Rouge after round two is finished here in the Baton Rouge Regional. LSU wins 83-56 over Middle Tennessee to advance to the round of 16. LSU will now take on the winner of number two UCLA, number seven Creighton. That game is scheduled for tomorrow night. We are joined by head coach Kim Mulkey, far end of the table, Flaugé Johnson and Angel Reese. We will start by asking questions to the players first, if you will, as we've been doing all weekend. Introduce yourself, your affiliation, and address which player uh, you're asking a question to. We will start with questions for the players first. Yeah, Matthew Bruneth on three. Uh, Flage, right, I guess for both of y'all, I don't think y'all had a steal in the first half, and y'all come out, I think, four steals in the first four minutes. Just what changed defensively for y'all, and what allowed y'all to go in that run? Uh, Haley, um, you know, I told Haley we got to cut the head off the snake, you know what I'm saying? And she really took that challenge on because they, they, they point guard. She's little, but she's mighty, and she makes things happen for them, and she breaks down defenses. So Haley gave us the opportunity to be able to get in some passing lanes for the bigs to be able to work their mojo. So that's all Haley Van Liff right there. Bryce Coon, 24-7 Sports. Angel, can you just kind of talk about Flage and I mean, I know you've talked about this all season, but just her ability to kind of not only ignite the crowd, but the bench and the team as well. Obviously a team effort, but just the job that she did today. Yeah, it comes from – it comes from the defensive end. I don't know if this is the one. Yeah. It comes from the defensive end. Um, I think she's done a great job to transition from her freshman to sophomore year and taking that on. She usually guards the best player on the team. I mean, tonight the point guard was that. But she took accountability and just being able to get down and give us a lot of energy. She told us, like I said, like she said in the locker room, cut the head off the snake. And I was the point guard. So just being able to have a leadership from a sophomore when <laughs> I might not be having my best game or Haley may not be having our best game, having also leadership from our younger players is great. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Sports Network. Angel for you. Uh, I think it was 421 in the third quarter. Flage was at the free throw line, and, and I saw Kim yell to get your attention, and she just mouthed to you, I need you. Just just that moment, what, what did you perceive the message to be, and how did you sort of implement that for the remainder of the game? Yeah, I didn't want to let my team down. Um, I think we were down at that point. And, of course, when anybody tells me that they need me, I want to be there and do whatever it takes to win. And I had another off night scoring, but I was just doing whatever it could to just help the team, getting steals, getting pass lanes, help my point guard. And, uh, like I said, I don't want to let my team down. I didn't want this to be my last game being here in the PMAC. So I just did whatever it takes to win. And me and Coach have that kind of relationship where she can get on me and tell me like, and talk to me like, I need you and give me that encouragement that I need. Uh, it's for both girls, but we'll Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV inventors. We'll start with Angel. Just the idea of this being a 40-minute game and understanding that, you know, Coach talked about it yesterday, not exactly the, the deepest benches on either side. So if you get them in foul trouble, you mm -hmm. guys could get, you know, the outcome you wanted. Yeah, we knew Middle, Te Middle Tennessee was, was going to be a team that played for 40 minutes. We saw when they played Louisville and they were, what, down 18 and came back and won that game. Mm -hmm. So we knew we were going to have to fight. Everybody was going to have to suck it up and get down and just do whatever it takes to win. And I think we did that. We had a lot of help also from the bench and being able to have Poa sub in and start that second half and mm -hmm. Haley still come in. It was the different rotations that we have. And like I said, you never know whose game, whose night it's going to be. So being able to have players that step up off the bench was something that was key for us tonight and then get them in foul trouble. Yeah, um, same. Um, we just had energy. I mean, like, the inner, I, I feel like everybody felt that shift in the energy going into halftime. I was like, my stomach was bubbling. I said, I ain't going home. I ain't got nothing to do, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like, until the summer. So, uh-uh. I, I want to be in New York. Simple. This is Blake Spadar from WNBA Swish. Uh, Y'all were, uh, were down 41-32 to uh, – in the middle of the th uh, start of the f uh, third quarter, and then y'all hit them with a blitz. What exactly happened, and how did y'all flip the switch? Defense. Yeah, defense. We that got energy. still. That defense, that defense, the defense. Offensively, it wasn't really an issue. Um, it hasn't been an issue for us because we know we can score the ball. But defense, number four, I told her, Savannah, after the game, I mean, she's a great player. Um, she can score all levels. And just being able to guard her and have to guard her and give her as much Hell as we could. I mean, she took great shots, and she made a lot of tough baskets. I mean, that was one of the tougher guards that I've seen. And I think our guards did a great job trying to just keep her composed as much as we can. But you got to give kudos to her. Number four, she's, she's a great player. Scott Rabelais with the advocate. Uh, Flaugier, uh, Coach Starkey was on, half, on the radio after the game sitting by me, and he said, 
you've really grown in your knowledge of the game uh, in, in, your, in your time here. How much, what did you think you knew when you came here and, and what do you think you know now and that has helped, helped your game and helped you be a better teammate and contributor to this team? Coming into college? Oh, I knew nothing. <laughs> I thought I knew something. And then I hit them going up and down with them college girls. And I said, oh, no, I got to slow it down. So my freshman year, like me and Coach Starkey, I never missed a day of film with him. Like he just teach me so much. And then some some point throughout this year, it kind of just clicked. Like, you know, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Like, you know, just listening to scouting report. Um, I feel like, you know, when you kind of know what the player going to do, you can kind of make them do whatever. I, I kind of think, like, defensively from an offensive standpoint, like, what would I do? You know what I'm saying? And so, And then I use that with scouting report, listen to what he says, because Coach Starkey is just – he's brilliant with scouting report. So I just try to learn anything I can, like suck all the juice from him, because he knows a lot. Angel, in, the, uh, in that rally, you kicked it to Poe. Poe found Michaela in the corner, and she drained that three. Just the place got nuts. But just her poise and kind of needing her buckets here, you know, getting her going in the postseason. Yeah, I mean, as a freshman, like I said, this is her second game in the NCAA tournament. I know nerves are still high for her. Um, the crowd was going crazy, and I know trying to get it to my teammates as much as I can, I love getting assists. Like, I try to lead the team in assists as best as I can. And I told her uh, one time I kicked it to her, and I think she did a – one dribble step back, and I was like, I, I didn't get. The, I don't think I got the assist for that. <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm happy for Michaela and her confidence and being able to get hit shots, but also, also on the defensive end. Um, number 15 was going off in the first half, and just I don't. I think she contained her in the second half, and I don't think she let her score in the second half. Maybe once, but being able to have her guard and being able to play both ends of the floor yes. is something that's important for her. She's super aggressive. Um, she plays hard all 40 minutes, even when her shots aren't going in. Um, defensively, we know where we're going to get from Anissa and rebounding from Anissa. And she just makes tough shots on offense. Um, I mean, she's a, a matchup nightmare. And having to guard her in practice is tough. And I will, I love having her on my team and wouldn't want to play against her just because everything that she brings to the table when it comes to rebounding and making shots and her versatility as well. So we like to try to go through Anissa as much as we can. And she just brings us a lot of confidence and energy. Uh, kind of playing off uh, Cobble's question earlier, but poise is a word that not just you two, but a lot of people have used uh, inside that locker room. Can you kind of walk us through some of the conversations uh, during the timeouts, you know, in the face when they're making runs and just how you've seen this team grow over the course of the year, just with that word poise? Yeah, I mean, sometimes we can get into the heat of a moment and, like, I could yell at Flage, like, Flage, like, but I, or or she'll yell at me or she'll yell at the team on Flage. It's the way you say it. Like being able to hold each other accountable is something that I love about this team because nobody takes it personal. Being able to get on each other and just being able to correct each other and just even if it's tough coach, tough, tough player coaching, we will come on the sideline and be like, hey, that was my bad for saying it like that, but you know what yeah, I mean yeah. type stuff. So I think that's something that's different from our team. Like we're able to talk to each other and get on each other and not take it personal, which is cool. One last question for the player, Michael up front. Yeah, Angel. Um, we know Flage has nothing to do until the summer, but how important was it for you to advance and keep going here? It, it's fun. I mean, I couldn't hear at one point in the PMAC. I, I didn't hear the play calls. I couldn't hear what was going on, and it was so much fun. I mean, I love playing um, here at, at LSU and everything going on. It was so much fun, and now to be able to advance for my second year here, I, it's just amazing. I wish we could take this crowd and, and bring it everywhere Man. we go, but I know they're going to come to Albany, and I hope to see everybody in Albany. Well, Jane Angel, congratulations. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thank you guys. You guys. Locker room. Um, go stream my new single, Ain't My Fault. It ain't my fault. It's out everywhere. Y'all go get that. Get, get out your fault. feelings. Get a bag. Yeah. 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 First time we've had playout music for any of the players after yeah. the press conference. All right, now we'll address post-game questions for Coach Mulkey. Once again, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Bryce Coon, 24-7 Sports. Coach, um, obviously that moment just right there, but towards the end of the game, can you just talk about the love for this team that you have, how special this group is, and just, you know, like they said, the, the accountability they have as a team together to be able to continue to move forward in this tournament. As you see, I coach a very shy team. <laughs> they're, they're very passive. I have to really get them going. Uh, no. Um, 
they're fun. They're fun. Even when they're frustrated, they're fun. Um, they're ballers. And um, uh, I, I just, I'm blessed. And um, I'm happy for them. I'm happy for LSU. Uh, let me say this. There's so many times people take getting to a Sweet 16 for granted. Do you know how many coaches probably had never done that in their career? I've always, always acknowledged that it's hard to do. I thought our fans were outstanding today. They showed up at what? Three, what, what time did we play the other day? Three o'clock and then today at two o'clock. Um, yeah, those kids keep me young. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Sports Network. Kim, obviously not the start that you guys wanted today. Just wanted to ask if externally, if you guys felt like you maybe were distracted a touch and, and just talk about how your team was able to, to just weather that, that early start. No, listen, man, I'm not, we're not going to let one sleazy reporter distract us from what we're trying to do. Absolutely not. My kids didn't even know I said that yesterday. That team's not involved in this. They were in shock when they saw all that on the internet. I don't take that stuff to my team. Um, was that the question, or did you have a second part? Sorry about uh, just how just how they they weathered that storm. I know, yeah, I know the first half didn't go the way you wanted to. Well, it didn't go, but guys, sometimes once we give credit to the other team, that's a Hall of Fame coach down there. Those kids hadn't lost a game since the what end of December. Uh, that's a good team, well coached. They run their stuff. They reverse the ball. They make you uh, defend for thirty seconds. Um, as I told you in the press conference before we played them, do you know how many Power Five teams that man has beaten? about 17, 19 in the SEC alone. Um, I give credit to the opponent. Brett Martell with AP. So, uh, you know, it looked like early on the size inside for MTSU was working for them and eventually, um, it look, you know, obviously Boulder Rave fouled out before the end of the third quarter, so you guys are physical and aggressive, continuing to pound it inside. Could you just, um, Give us some insight into what, into what worked in that way. Well, size matters, but I also think it doesn't matter. I'll take the smallest little point guard you got if they got quickness. But in certain positions, size matters. It makes you alter your shot. Now, Angel missed some breakaway layups. That had nothing to do with size inside. Uh, but she kept battling. Um, I think at half, Angel didn't even have an offensive board. Uh, I thought it was... Um, very obvious that use your fouls. They were physical. They used their fouls. And uh, we took advantage of it. I thought our energy, I thought our um, aggressiveness, I thought our effort in the second half wore them down. Even when they got good looks, they didn't make them. And I think at the end of the third quarter, if I remember, I think they only had one three. And I think we just picked up our effort uh, a lot more in the third and fourth quarter. Coach, uh, how do you how'd you feel about uh, y'all's team only having one turnover in the second half? I feel good that we only had seven for the game. And I it looked a little bit different than the other night, didn't it? The other yes, day. It did. And uh, another question: How how did you uh, feel about Haley, Haley's uh, defensive effort despite only sh shooting one for five? I was very proud of Haley today. She doesn't start the second half for no other reason other than a coach's decision. And that child worked her rear end off in the second half defensively. And as Fage said, she set the tone for us to pick our energy up on the defensive end. Um, she's, she's just trying to do something in her career before college ends for her, and that's, you know, to try to win a championship. And I just told her how unselfish she was today to let me start uh, POA. She didn't ask why. She didn't pout. She went out there and did her job. Back to the defense. Uh, you, you held them to eight field goals in the second half, two, two total threes. Just the total effort, I guess, you're speaking about Haley, but Flage and her ability to you know, get up and down the court. Just, is that what you're most proud of and, and feel like your team has a chance to go deep because of? I thought um, we picked up 
pushing the ball. We were running in transition at all positions in the second half. What we did better defensively is we helped each other. We helped each other. And it started with our post players helping Poa, helping Haley when they, that young lady would come off the, the screens at the top. I mean, it's just hard to guard somebody that really makes them flow and makes them go. And uh, I thought late in the shot clock, they did exactly what they've been taught to do, and that's you switch anything under 10 seconds on the shot clock, you'll hear us holler hot. That's letting them know uh, we switch at all positions on ball screens. I think also in the second half, um, we rebounded better. We, those guys were kicking our rear on the boards early. And honestly, that wasn't in the scouting report. That was kind of a shock that we were getting out rebounded or, or those things were happening uh, in the first half. Hey, Coach, Matthew Bruneth on three. Um, how important was the, the pitch ahead passes that y'all were able to get to get y'all's transition offense going or at least get into y'all's offense earlier to give you opportunities? Well, at halftime, we told them we need to get some transition buckets. And um, let's go. Uh, if you get a rebound, Michaela, if you get a rebound, Flage, take off. Everybody run. And I just think that um, we got some cherry picking there. I think Angel was down there one time. and. Uh, we got some breaks to get it started like that, but then it just kind of snowballed and we just started running and going. Uh, I think they got in foul trouble. May I can't remember when we got into the bonus, but obviously we were telling them, why settle? Take it right down their throats. One last one for Coach in the back. Chessa Boucher with NBC 33 here in Baton Rouge. Flage hit a some big time shots, but what did you see from her tonight? I've seen it in Flage this last half of the season. That kid's confidence is unbelievable right now. Um, and it's, it's not just one dimensional. She's doing so many good things out there on the floor. One, she's taking care of the ball. Two, she knows when to drive, when to shoot the, the shot from the perimeter. She's, other than today, she's most of the time being asked to guard the better perimeter player. Um, I think Scott asked it earlier. She's just starting to learn this game at all aspects, and it's just fun to watch her. She'll get in that timeout now. It's so funny, I don't even have to talk anymore. She wants to draw this up, and she wants to say this, and then Angel has her two cents, and so every now and then I get to chime in. Coach, congratulations. Uh -huh. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Good luck next week. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. We'll hear from uh, Middle Tennessee's head coach and two of their players here in just a moment. <laughs> 